I get this question asked a lot. What do you think of waist cinchers, waist trainers, corsets, squeams? I'm referring to the ones that have the ribbing in them, like a corset, and they have the teeth so you could keep tightening them in and in and in and in. Squeezers so pretty soon you're like, I don't like that look. <laughs> First things first, let's go by experience. I personally have used a waist cincher, or at the time it was the Squeam, that's what I knew it as, and it was about three years ago when I competed. Now at the time, I didn't have the knowledge I do now when it comes to obliques. <laughs> right when I was competing, I really wanted dominant, I wanted my obliques to stand out. So what was I doing? Literally two, three times a week for six months straight, I was doing the heaviest dumbbell side bends I could do, like 35 pounds, 40 pounds I was getting up to. Eventually, what happened? Oh, I grew some obliques, but I didn't realize how prominent they became. So I didn't know this until after I competed. The one thing the judges said to me is my obliques were too big. I basically came down like this and then cut in like this. So right now, they are more normal, but they literally came out here and then cut in. So I had very well overly developed obliques. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, like how do I get it back down? I built all this muscle now, what do I do? So at the time, a few friends and coaches had recommended not train obliques and getting a squeam that I could cinch in my waist and really try to just squeeze it in and tighten it in for a certain amount of months. So I did that for you know a good six, eight months, but I stopped training obliques completely. I didn't do anything directly targeting the obliques until maybe like a year ago. Most of you know, and if you don't know, Breathing is so, 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 so important when you're training. If you lack on any proper breathing, you're gonna lack in performance on your training. Those of you who don't do a lot of yoga know the importance of channeling and controlling and proper breathing. I did yoga for you know, off and on for years, so I learned a lot about the proper breathing and when it comes to weight training. So wearing this waist cincher restricted my breathing and I hated it. I found I was getting out of breath a lot. When you push a rep, you exhale. When you're getting set up to your next rep, you have to breathe in through your nose and then exhale through your mouth. This is the proper breathing. I couldn't do that. I felt like I was <sighs> gasping for air all the time. And I know a lot of you may not admit to it, but it does restrict your breathing. Yes, it will give you a smaller waist if you're consistent with it. You have to wear it every single day. Some, I think some of these girls wear it hours and hours on end every single day or even when they sleep. And to me, that's dumb. <laughs> like, I don't want to be wearing a waist cincher all the time. I want to be like, hey, hey, yeah. I tried sleeping in it before. Uncomfortable. Plus it's kind of scary, if it restricts your breathing in the first place and you're wearing it when you're sleeping, that just scares me. Like, what if you never wake up? If that doesn't scare you, I don't know what does. <laughs> you have to be consistent with wearing this waist trainer to maintain this tiny little waist because as soon as you're, you stop wearing it, you're going to go back to normal. It's how it is with anything. You have to be consistent with it to maintain, to get results, or whatever it is. And who wants to spend, what is it, I think $60 or even more per waist trainer, and you're gonna have to buy one, like every time that one's like used up and old and stretched out, you're gonna have to get a new one. Who wants to spend that kind of money all the time? That's just retarded. You could spend your money on better things like donuts and cute gym clothes. <laughs> From my own personal experience with a waist trainer, I feel like it flattened me too much, and I didn't want that flat look. I want to have the more curvy of my natural waist. If everybody wears a waist trainer, everybody's going to have a very similar waist, and why does everybody want to be the same? <laughs> and also, too, I notice like after you wear it for a certain amount of time, that the ribbing starts coming out and starts poking you, like in various spots, like annoying, like an ow. I end up, I, a lot of times I had bruising in certain areas, I mean, because when I train, I train. I also don't want to be spending tons of money 
on it every so many months because I have to get a new one. Just diet and exercise, guys. Just eat properly, eat balanced, nutritious food, exercise, weight train. The heavier weights you use, the more you're gonna engage your core too. So doing certain exercises, the way like it was so tight, like I couldn't get full movement into it. Like, hello. <laughs> I literally felt like I was going like this all the time. Now this is just coming from my own personal experience. Why would you want to be restricted in your workouts? Why would you want to struggle in your workouts? And so that's what I was finding as I was struggling just trying to complete certain exercises when if I didn't have the waist trainer on, I could have performed them all the way. <laughs> ah, it makes me so crazy. Is people say it gives them support. Especially when they're doing squats or heavy, heavy exercises. Really? Really? <laughs> That's what they have weight belts for. They make those specific things for support. From my different ex experiences, using a waist trainer and using a weight belt, completely different in all aspects. I prefer the weight belt over a waist trainer if you want support. And why not work on your core strength, your back strength, and overall general health with various different exercises instead of depending on a waist trainer to support your back. You don't wanna train your body to depend on a waist trainer for support. Then you're never gonna progress forward. Now it's one thing if you are going heavy, like muscle man heavy. <laughs> but most of us, just the general population, isn't trying to do that, isn't trying to go for the next strong man competition or something. Most of us just want to be healthy, want to be strong, want to look good and feel good. So you don't really need a weight belt or use a waist trainer to support your back, you know? Again, it just comes down to your training. That's where you can build real good core strength and back strength. And there's so many tons of exercises that can help with that. So I think depending on a little contraption is silly. Ooh, ooh. It can really create a unnatural looking waist. I'm sorry, I want to keep the waist that I was given because it's my waist. Nobody else's, my waist. <laughs> I like my waist. <laughs> I will have to admit though, a little bit over a year ago, um, I was hit head on by a guy who fell asleep at the wheel. Hit me, which flipped my truck, uh, and I got, you know, an airbag went off in my face and I got whiplash really bad. So I had a really bad pain on one side of, on, into my lumbar, into my lower back, and also into my neck. So that, and that's all I had, was extreme deep tissue muscle soreness and some whiplash. Um, other than that, no injuries, but for about six months, I couldn't train, weight train, normally. I was doing a lot of stretching, very lightweight stuff. I was doing some light cardio and I was wearing the actual waist trainer to help support my back. But that was it. I wasn't doing heavy weight training or crazy exercises that I do now. So I think those can be really good in those cases. Um, and again, people who have a lot of extra skin um, who want to help just kind of like bring it in. <laughs> so I think those are really good but temporary. Not something that's consistently and not something for vanity. That you're so insecure about your stomach that you have to spend all this money and wear these ridiculous waist trainers just to try to get a certain look. I have not worn a waist trainer. It's been um, a little over a year now since I've actually worn one since my accident. Now I do use this, this is a sweat belt, not a waist trainer because look at this. Look at it, it's like a noodle. Like, look at this. You cannot do that with a waist trainer. So there is no ribbing in this. It doesn't change the shape of my waist. It doesn't restrict my breathing. It's just great with creating like a thermal effect and temporary water loss. <laughs> and a lot of people ask if this actually burns fat or burns calories. No, it does not. It creates a thermo effect, kind of create, helps create circulation, like heating up the area, but it's not gonna specifically burn fat, burn calories. That's what diet and exercise are for, guys. 
<laughs> it just wraps around your waist. It can be tight, it can be loose, but it helps with sweating. <laughs> it helps with water retention. Now, a lot of us women hold a lot of water in our midsection and our lower back, and I like wearing this because it helps to get rid of that water retention, but I have to be consistent with it every single day and wear it every single day if I want to keep it tight and <laughs> keep that water retention low. But as soon as I stop for a certain period of time, water comes back, which is how it is. I will wear my flimsy one and that's about it. Because <laughs> this does that. Sometimes when I'm wearing it, it's just like a loose, I feel like I'm wearing like a loose shirt. Again, everybody has personal preferences for stuff, so that's up to you. I leave that up to you. I'm not gonna tell you no, I'm not gonna tell you how dare you if you use that, shame on you. I'm not gonna judge you if you wanna use a waist trainer. I'm just giving you my personal opinion and my, from my own experiences. Sometimes we just need to experience things and learn from them in order to make our final decision. And I think that goes for anything. And I really am a strong advocate for that. So if you wanna try it out, for a while go ahead and do it but really pay attention to how you're feeling you know pay attention to the breathing watch how it changes your breathing I don't care who you are but it does affect your breathing and you are restricted in a lot of aspects when it all comes down to it proper balanced nutrient dense diet <laughs> weight training means lifting some heavy weights consistently plyos hit cardio all of those, all balanced together, is what gives you real results, guys. Not all these like crazy gimmick things, okay? <laughs> so hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight and a little bit of help and in making your decision on what you wanna do. But don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button, cause you know you like my weirdness. I'm normal. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't like being normal. I like being weird. <laughs> Hopefully, not too many thumbs down. Don't give me a thumbs down, guys. Every time you do, a tear falls. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Yeah, some people don't like it, that's okay. <laughs> don't forget to share. Sharing is caring, knowledge is power. And I love you guys. Thank you again so much for all your support and the love that you send my way. I'm sending it back to you.